Hello! In today's video, I'm taking you digging with me at the Goodwill Outlet bins, and then at the end of the video, I'll show you what I brought home. Here we go! I don't do a ton with clothing, although I have found some great things at the bins. I just don't like digging through the clothing, to be honest with you. But if I see a bin that has like some linens on top, I will pay a little closer attention. And that was the case on this day. I was able to find some vintage linens right from the first bin that I started in. Then I moved to what they call the hard goods bins. And at my bins store, the bins have been really mixed up since the pandemic, since we opened up after lockdown. So it would be, it used to be the case that you like, you wouldn't find toys mixed in with decor. And now it's just kind of a jumbled mess. So even if there's a lot of toys in a bin, I will still dig and look through because sometimes you find some treasures. I like to pick up craft supplies at the bins because it's a great affordable way to do it. I wasn't sure what all those letters spelled out though, but sometimes I'll just put things in my cart and then I'll kind of assess at the end of my trip to see if I want to keep it all. And here were more of those icicle lights. Anytime I find vintage unopened embroidery kits, I pick them up because these do sell pretty well for me. So that's what I was looking at here. These are American Girl doll beds, which sell for decent money. Sorry about my hair in the shot there. <laughs> but I don't like to ship big things. It's just not, it's not what I want to do. And I don't really like to sell on Facebook Marketplace. So I generally leave like big heavy things behind. I thought this was cool. It's an old like wrench set. I mostly like the box. If it had been a different color, I probably would have dumped out the tools and just taken the box because the tools were quite heavy and that would cost like several dollars to buy at the bins. I thought this was cool, but weird. It's a jingle bell made to look like birch bark, but a birch bark jingle bell wouldn't jingle. So I thought that was a little bit funny. My bins managers will not make deals with you on metal or glass because they get money to recycle those things. So I can usually work a deal with them if something is heavy and it's made out of wood, but not if it's made out of metal or glass. In the next bin, I found this cool galvanized piece. It has a punch out that's like in the 
pattern of like a Nordic sweater, which I thought was kind of different. This is my thrifter's regret for the week. I should have brought this Christmas tree home. I actually don't have any idea why I didn't. Like sometimes I just don't understand myself. It's a Christmas tree and it has owls all over it. Why did I leave it there? I totally could have DIY'd it a little bit more to like fit my house, but for whatever reason I didn't. I've been doing a lot of organizing in my home and the bins are a great place to find organizers. So that's what I was looking at those for. I skipped ahead a bin because it didn't look very interesting. This doesn't look very interesting either. I, I do not like to bring soft things home from the ends. I just don't. Because I think it's gross. But that's just me. I really like this jack-o'-lantern bucket. I don't know the date on it. I'm not great at dating these things. I mean, obviously it's not too old because it has a, a barcode on it, but it says Empire on the bottom. And it just, it looks a little older. I would guess it's probably from the 90s. some resale value this one's pretty messed up all those dark marks are where the glaze has gotten cracked and then water has gotten in so it's really not good for resale and really you shouldn't probably bake in it because it's probably going to crack at some point always like to find bags of Christmas decor. You never know what you're going to find. Even if it looks like it's a bag of stuff that you're not interested in, sometimes you'll find like one gem in the bottom. So that's why I always look. I should have looked more closely at those art prints that I just moved. I'm pretty sure the artist on those is something, I can't remember the name, but it's like all of their prints, like the characters have like big eyes and it's very collectible. So I don't know if those were actual prints. I didn't look closely at them at all. You could tell I just kind of passed them, but I saw them when I was editing and thought I would mention it. I know someone will mention the Care Bear. I see and saw the Care Bear, but again, I don't do plush. So I'm sure someone came along after me and picked it up.
I found a bag of cookie cutters and there are some in this bag that I did not have. So I was excited to find this. I found this Fitz and Floyd Santa plate. They're not huge money makers, but people really like them. So I've had success selling Fitz and Floyd. old adding machine reminded me of my childhood. I definitely had something like this that I used to play with as a kid. Okay, you all, it wasn't as good a week this week at the Goodwill Bins, but that's how it works. Sometimes you hit it out of the park. Sometimes it's okay. It was okay. It wasn't a total dud, but it was okay. All right, so I'm going to just show you quickly what I got. I did pick up the vintage linens. And so this is the one that had the hole in it. I just, I thought the stitching was still so pretty and the crochet or whatever. I don't even think, I don't know if this is crochet. You guys can tell me. A lot of you have more knowledge about stitches than I do. But I just thought that was really pretty. And even if I don't use it like this, like if I do something else with it, I'm gonna look on Pinterest and get some ideas. I just thought it's worth saving from the landfill. So, and then I did pick up these three doilies. Sometimes I use these as doilies. Sometimes I use them in crafting. Sometimes I sell them. So kind of all depends. These are different though. I thought these were kind of like different patterns than I've seen before. So there's that one. And this one's a square, which is always kind of nice because mostly you find round ones. And then green. I always like colors. This one um, I'll probably keep. You can, you can tuck it into like a cheese box or another little box, a little drawer that you have. Kind of hang it over the edge and it looks pretty. All right. And then I picked this up. I have one of these. Actually, I'll grab Actually it. Actually not. <laughs> I do have one of these. It's upstairs. I created this one from a candlestick and a dish. But the reason I like them, minus the burlap, which is misplaced, but you can use them at holiday time to just display like in vintage vignettes, you know, these are like those light backers or whatever. So I thought I have some vintage dominoes that I picked up at the bins a while back. I thought that might be cool or like dice or even like the little tart tins, you know. So I like incorporating these into displays. That's why I picked that up. All right, and then I got, oh man, I love this. So I love the box. It says three light candelier, and then look, it's in here. It's fantastic, I need bulbs. I should have picked the bulbs up because I did see bulbs, but. So I could totally put some, oh, maybe it was never used. I don't know. I don't know if it works or not, but if I get some of those, you know, maybe the orangey bulbs or something and put some vintage greenery around it, I can use this in one display and then this as the backdrop to my vintage shelves. That's what I was thinking with this. It's just so cute and I love old advertising. So that's what I got that for. It will go into my vintage Christmas collection, which is ever growing. Okay, and then let's see. Oh, the cookie cutters. So I was super excited about these because there are some that I don't have. 
And also, I think I've mentioned to you, one of you suggested doing like a cookie cutter Christmas tree in my kitchen. I'm totally doing that. Thank you to whoever had the idea. So I'm going to do a miniature tree with cookie cutters. And I got some ribbon at Dollar General the other day to hang them on the tree. So that's why I was thinking, even though I have some of these, they'll be useful for my little cookie cutter tree. Okay, so the ones that I really liked, well, this is the one that I loved because I love Rudolph and... Is this his girlfriend? What was her name? Clarice? So I'm not sure if this is Clarice or Rudolph, but I thought this was really cute. These make really nice cookies. Is this Tupperware? 1980. Mm, I think it's a 1988 Wilton. So it's Wilton, not Tupperware. But these make nice cookies because you can cut the cookie out and then it leaves this like stamp in there and then you can put uh, decorative sugars and the sugars stay behind in the ridges and it just makes a really nice easy cookie so that's why I like those there's also another one I'm not sure if I have this one this one feels like Tupperware but it doesn't say and it was sold 70 oh, oh Hallmark this one's Hallmark I'm wrong I'm wrong all over today but I thought he was cute I I might have this one it looks like he was sold separately it says 75 cents so that one I will check on and then I got a whole bunch of the metal kind which will go on my little tree. There's a few Christmas trees and a Santa. And, oh, this is a cool one. That looks like, um, there's like a Swedish, I don't know if it's like a goat. I don't know. It shows up in a lot of, it's not the dollar horse, but there's another like animal that shows up in a lot of the like Nor Norwegian and Swedish like Christmas folk art. And that's what that kind of reminded me of. I don't know if that's what that is, but I thought he was cool and appropriate for where we live. And then the classic bell and the star. And, oh, this is a cool one. Gingerbread, but he's got the full handle. But that was nice. That's a nice one. That one I might like set into a display somewhere. Not sure. Whoopsie. Okay. Oh, I like this one. I don't think I have this one. It's a moon, but it's like got the, what do you call that? Hmm. Like a pinking sheer edge, but that's totally not the right word for it. You know what I'm getting at. So <laughs> those were cool. I was happy to find those. All right. And then I got, uh, I'll show you the books in a minute. I got this, the lights. I don't know if they work. Let's try them out. Let's see, we can test them together. The problem at my bins, they don't let you test anything, which is quite frustrating. Oh, they work, yay. So they're originally from Kmart. There uh, is no barcode on them. So I guess they're, you know, I don't know what, the 80s maybe, oops. Maybe the 80s, not sure, but um, there you can kind of see that they light. So that'll be cool. I will put those out uh, by my shipping table instead of my skeletons. I thought those would be cute. I got these to sell. Um, they are, and I have to figure out where I can sell them. You heard what I was saying about Etsy because you can only put things that are before 2001. I'm pretty sure these are, but I will look into them. Okay, so it looks like this one is whole. So, it, and it, you know, unopened, it says, caution, I was not hired for my disposition. That's fine. And then this one is also unopened. You never forget how to work but you can forget why. And I thought that was kind of cute. And then this one is just the fabric and the uh, pattern. This one is missing. Actually, it might just be the fabric. This one's a dud. This one doesn't even have its pattern anymore. So this one is just the fabric and I will probably just donate that because this is, it's a dud. So I have two. And I've listed lots of uh, older embroidery patterns, not necessarily on Etsy, sometimes on Etsy, sometimes um, just on, on eBay or sometimes through private sales. And they generally sell pretty well. So that's what those are for. I got this to sell. I thought he was really cute. Fitz and Floyd Noel Classic. And let's open it up. I did open it at the place. Um, so I'm not sure anyone used this, but they because it's still in its plastic. It's really pretty though, he has a really pretty face. So he's in really great shape. I don't know a year on him, so I don't know where I'll be able to list him, but I thought he was really cute. So, and Fitz and Floyd again, you know, it's usually sells pretty well for me. It's not like highly valuable, but you know, 
it helps pay for your bins trip. Okay, and then I got this. I love this. I'm definitely going to use this in my Christmas decor. I haven't decided exactly what I'm doing with it yet, but I thought it was really different. It has handles. And I, I love galvanized stuff, so I thought that was cool. So that'll be nice in my Christmas decor. And then I got some books. Oh, I love old books. You know I love old books. So I got this one to keep. It's um big, big storybook. I'm going to do some repair. I had told you, um, so I got my library tape. I will make a video of repair of how I, again, I'm not a professional, but how I do it just for my like little collecting that I do. I'm not like preserving it for all time, but I do have ways to like preserve things so they don't get worse at least. So I'm going to do that because this one is kind of coming away from its um, seam. Now, really, if you're a librarian, you cut this all off and there's a big process that's used to uh, reattach a binding. I'm not going to do that. I'll show you what I do just to keep things nice, sir, or at least keep them from getting worse in my collection. But I love this book. I just thought it was great. I love the cover, first of all. And then it just, I love this. Look at the little puppy, the bear. I mean, it's just so cute. And then it's not a lot of pictures, but um, there are, I don't know, it just looks old, you know. I just think it's really neat. Really neat. Ugh. So, but that was cool. But I especially liked it for the cover. Then I got this one. Um, I'm going to remove the dust jacket. I will probably tuck it away somewhere because I feel bad getting rid of it because it's been on the book so long. It's in really bad shape. I could probably do a little repair on that, but there's only so good that's ever going to get because it's just missing pieces. But I don't want to get rid of it, but I do want to use the book. It's Treasure Island. I want to use it like this, you know, in my little uh, casserole metal thing where I put books of different colors for the different seasons. I want to do that for Christmas. And so I've started keeping an eye out for red and for green books. And I thought this was a cool old one. And this one was published in Racine, Wisconsin by the Witten Publishing Company. And I don't think I found a year on it. Nope, let's see. I don't think so. No, but it's definitely old. Look at that font. So I'm not sure of the year. It doesn't really matter, I'm not selling it, but it's always interesting to know. And so I thought those were really cool. And then these will probably wind up in my Etsy shop just because they're old and they're in pristine condition. It's two vintage coloring books. I don't know how they made it through the bins so in such good shape. And this one, look at this. So 29 cents, happy birthday. They're not colored in at all. This one's from 1975. And look, it has a little, oh, where is it? Come on, here. And it has someone wrote 1975, happy birthday. I thought that was so cute. So some little kid who's now my age, uh, or maybe, I guess they're a little older than me. They might be Chris's age. He's sitting over there. Here, let's show you. Give a wave, Chris. He's reading comic books. That's what he generally likes to do. Anyway, so someone maybe his age got this coloring book in 1975 and never colored in it. And then this one, who knows, maybe it was from the same person. I don't know. But it's also uncolored in, and it's just really cute. I just thought these were adorable. So I'll probably stick those in my shop. This one is older. It's 1967. And that's it. That is all for my bins haul this week. It was not the mother load like last week, but you know, not every week can be that way or I would be buried in stuff. So <laughs> anyway, I hope this was enjoyable. Thanks so much for watching. And until my next video, take care of yourselves, stay positive and stay safe. I'll see you next time. Bye.